car audio, etc. is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. Good morning guys, how's it going? James here from Cardio etc. A very interesting video today. This could go one of two ways. <laughs> So, this video, by the way, sorry about the voice, um, I'm sick, so, sorry about that, but um, this vi video is going to, I think, divide the audience a wee bit, half of you are probably going to be like, that's awesome, oh my god, how did you do that, that's great, genius idea, the other half of you guys are probably going to be like, are you kidding me, James, that is horrible, that is horrible, horrible work, you should not be doing this, you shouldn't be in the industry, it's gonna go like that. It's gonna either, hopefully not start a war in the comments, but this video is going to be basically a botch job. I have done botch jobs in the past, but only if it's 100% necessary. So these legacies, these 2003 all the way up to 2008 or nine, depending on when your car was first registered, it'll be rest. Because I just want to say that because there are 2009 legacies, which are like the 2010 model. 2003 to 2009 Subaru legacies and Outbacks have this dash. This dash here, the trapezium, right? Oop, that's my hand. The trapezium dash and the top section, right? So 2003 to 2005, I believe, have one like this which is silver, they have the silver version of this. And then most of them up here, you can get cars with different things up here, I'll show you some pictures in a minute. But 2003 to 2005 have a silver dash down here, and 2006 to 2009 have the black one. And then there are versions of both of those generations of cars which have a Macintosh system, which are ones I have worked on before, and you can, depending on your car, because with Japanese cars, not I don't know if any of you guys in America know this, but um, when people in Japan buy these cars straight away, brand new, I became very aware of this because, you know, Judy, my legacy, when I recently got her, um, I was basically taught how cars get kind of set up in Japan with what features and that. So in America, it seems like the pretty standard thing is to go out, decide what model of car you want, and then you can choose between like one or two or three or four different uh, packages you know just the base model maybe an upgrade to one that has leather and then a sunroof and one that has a premium audio package that sort of thing like or sport or something like you you would choose a package with the features you want in Japan if they want to buy a brand new car they go into the dealer and say I want a legacy and they go and they give them a form and then you tick every single feature that you want to be added on sunroof yes heated seats no premium audio system yes Leather, no, like you know, you can get cars that have premium audio system, sunroof, heat, heated seats, all the works, cruise control, but not leather, you know. They it just basically you pick and choose what features you want. So that's why there is such a variation in these cars with what setups they have. Because a lot of these cars, these legacies and outbacks, up here will have something different. They will either have a like a hole for a seven inch screen for navigation or they will have like a, uh, a singleton mounting pocket in here like so this is the standard stock setup it comes with the clock and the flap open pocket that's pretty standard but it's just as common in New Zealand to see ones that have a, f a big hole for a 7 inch navigation screen and ones that have a singleton hole so I'll insert a couple of pictures here to show you some of the jobs I've done on these legacies in the past. There is the one with the great big hole at the top and I have in the past managed to fit certain doubled in stereos up there. But it is only limited to a certain few models of stereo because behind this there is a great big structural rail that goes the whole width of the car in the like down the sort of bottom half of it. So only certain doubled in stereos will go in here. Basically they'll either have to be shallow mount or have a singleton top half chassis. A really good example of this would be the Sony 
uh, XAV AX100. It's a double DIN face, but it only has a single DIN chassis at the top. The other example would be that I have done in these cars is the Alpine ILX 007E, which is a really shallow mount double DIN CarPlay stereo. And I think I have photos of both of those. Sorry, I don't have the photo of the Sony having been done one of these, but um, that one would work. But I do have photos of the ILX 007E, which I've done in these cars. So that's how you can do it in the top. The other way you can do it in the bottom, let me give you the options because that's gonna help explain to you guys why the customer is elected to go for the way I'm going. So, you come over here to our fitting kit book. Now, as I, as far as I'm aware, nobody, like in all the fitting kit world out there, makes a aftermarket fitting kit for these legacies and outbacks that is a third party. We can get them, these bad boys here, the black one and the silver one, but these, even though this isn't from our Subaru supplier, this is like our, our, our fitting kit supplier, this is genuine Subaru, that is genuine Subaru. $1,400 to the customer, $1,500 to the customer. Absolutely extortionous, ridiculous prices. It is unfair to expect customers to have to pay that much just to want to put in a $300 stereo. So most of the time they hear that and they go, nah. So, anytime one of these cars comes in and it's got a spot at the top for me to put a stereo, I say, you're lucky, I can do that. I can put a new stereo up the top and simply bypass the bottom one, leave it connected to power, but disconnect it from speakers. And that's what I've done a lot of in the past. Here's another photo of a singleton mounted in the top there with one of the singleton pockets. And this is the other method that I've come up with just recently. I've done a couple of these so far. So this is the earlier model, 2003 to 2005 Macintosh edition. It's got a separate heater and stereo up here. So this did have the Macintosh singleton one up there. And I think I did actually do a whole video on doing one of these. Basically all I did was I whacked a hole in the back of it and mounted a singleton stereo through put some holes in the correct places to mount it. Actually, what you're seeing there, that's the top of the original stereo. I left the chassis intact so I had something to mount it to. And yeah, I just basically sh cut a hole in the front of the stereo and whacked this through. And that's the Macintosh version. The reason I can do that is because with the Macintosh version, the heater down there has its own plug. It's a separate circuit board to the stereo. It's, a, it's its own separate thing. Now with the silver editions of these cars, the 2003 to 2005, not the case. The heater and the stereo are all one big piece of circuitry. The heater plug actually plugs into the back of the stereo and then it goes out to the heater buttons. So if you've got that um, car, I'll put a picture up of what I'm talking about. If you've got that one, you're screwed. You can either replace it with a genuine fitting kit and set yourself back about 1,400 New Zealand dollars, depending on where you guys are in the world of course. Or if you're lucky enough, if you've got a double, a large hole up here, you can put a large uh, stereo up here. Or a singleton hole, you can put a singleton stereo. If you've got this flap and the clock, as of yet, I have not found a nice way to mount a stereo in the singleton flap place here. Possibly if I really, really botched this, I could like cut this uh, moving part out, cut the sides out and try and kind of botch mount a stereo up there. But I haven't given that one a go yet. I've only, you know, done it, I've, if I've had the flap so far, I've just left the flap as it is. But, what I was saying earlier about the uh, separate circuit boards, key point, this black one, the 2000 and, I think it's 2006 onwards, this here is a separate thing. So even though in the Macintosh, there is actually a divide here, two separate whole units, even though this is all one big bit of plastic the whole way through, the key point is that the circuit board behind here and the circuit board behind here are separate. So the heater plug plugs into the heater and the stereo plugs plug into the stereo. That is good for me because it means I can cut holes in here without damaging the heater. So today, as you will no doubt have gathered from the uh, thumbnail, I'm going to be, for the first time actually, I haven't done one of these black ones before, I've only done the Macintosh ones, I'm going to be for the first time whacking a hole in the front of that stereo. Cutting a hole to put a singleton stereo in. Going to have to retain the hazard light button and retain all the heater functions. All of these buttons, I will likely do what I do with the Macintosh ones where I use hot glue to make them static so that they're still there but they don't actually press. 
there's gonna be a hole around about here somewhere I might actually use the CD player line as something to go off oh no what I might do actually is use this line of the screen as my top I'm not sure how I'm gonna go with these uh, knobs because the singleton is definitely gonna come all the way out to these knobs and that's why I'm interested to see how this goes because I haven't done one before I'm also wiring up the steering wheel controls because it is a Pioneer stereo going in so I'm gonna get those wired up and yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this video if you think it looks ugly and botchy please be nice in the comments you just gotta remember not many options with this car in, in New Zealand and the reason I have to come up with these solutions is because these cars particularly this one this car is now 11 years old plus all the time that it took to you know assemble it and all that sort of stuff these stereos these factory stereos are probably gonna start dying soon so as an audio installer business of in New Zealand where there's lots of these cars you've not guys have no idea these legacies and outbacks probably one of the most common cars in this city they're so common I think it's just South Islanders really like their station wagons because we like going on road trips um, so I as an installer in the city where there's lots of these cars it is a good idea to have a cost-effective solution in my head where I can put new stereos in these cars because these are gonna start dying soon and not everyone wants to spend heaps of money on a $1,500 fitting kit. If there is a spot up here, I would recommend doing that over this thing. But unfortunately, this car doesn't have a single din or a double din mounting spot. It's only got the option of putting a hole in the bottom one. So that's what I'm doing today, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm gonna do a time lapse and get the stereo and everything out. I've already tested all the functions. Actually, I need to test the full functionality of the heater. That's probably something I should do. Tested all the steering control functions, they work. I've made sure there's no CDs in here, I've checked that we get FM and AM and all the speakers are going except for the front tweeters. Now there are some aftermarket tweeters up here someone has put in, they aren't going and the factory tweeters just there aren't going either. So I'm guessing there's an aftermarket woofer down there that someone has put in themselves and the tweeters might just not be hooked up or not hooked up right or something. That's not my problem, I don't have to worry about it. All I know is that all four channels of output are working. Let's check the heater controls. We get all those inside outside auto works it's dual zone temperature goes all the way to 32 down to 18 And just check the dimming as well. All those are lit up. Yep. It's all lit up. Cool. That completely works. I can start the time lapse and get this completely apart. Sweet as. Okay guys, so I've got the stereo out of the car and I've taken the brackets off and I'll show you just what I mean by this whole separate circuit board thing. I flip it up here, you can see down here, if I can get it to focus, there is a plug hole just there for the heater and that's just for the heater plugs. On the silver dash version of the stereo, that plug is up in here and you can't separate it from the uh, heater. But this black one, it's separate so it's all good. So what I'm going to do now basically is just start stripping this down as much as I can. I think what I want to try and do, since this is like a doubled in chassis on the back of it, I want to try and keep the whole outer shell if I can, but basically get all the guts out of the inside of it um, and have the back off obviously, because that way you can still use the brackets on like the factory mounting points possibly, that'd be really ideal. So all I'm going to do is start basically taking this apart, separating the um, actual unit from the face plate and then what I'm gonna do is start working on a hole in the front of this. So this is gonna take me a while to sort of, you know, do and figure out as I go. So I'm gonna time lapse it. So yeah, hopefully this goes well, cause once I've done this, there's no going back. It's one way trip. So 
Something I just want to make sure before I go any further is um, I did have to end up having, having to take the heater kind of apart a wee bit to get this bracket off which was mounted to the back of all of this and there was a wee ribbon connector going between the stereo circuit board and the heater circuit board so what I'm going to do now, I've disconnected that I'm going to put this heater back together, plug it in and make sure that the heater and everything still works completely without any of the stereo stuff connected. I'm 90% sure that it will, but it's best to make sure before I go any further with destroying that stereo. Heater is back together, just the stereo is disconnected. Let's go just check it works. As you can see, no stereo on the back of it, just the heater plug. Let's plug the heater plug, which is the little black one, into the back of the heater, just like that. And we're just gonna set that there, for now. Pretending and now turn the key on to ignition. Looks like it still works. I'm just gonna check everything the same I did before. That works, that works, AC works, fan all the way up works, inside outside works, auto works, both of the heat both zone heat adjusters work all the way off and the dimmer works as well. Sweet, everything works perfectly fine. I'm not sure what that little ribbon that connected the stereo circuit board to the heater circuit board would have had to have dumped with, but um, obviously it all still works with it disconnected. I can continue with the job then. I can uh, start debotcherizing the back of that stereo and I'm trying to decide whether or not I should like cut a hole through the circuit board or whether I should take this whole circuit board out. Because if I leave the circuit board in, it actually will leave all these buttons like held in and pressable and everything. I'm trying to decide whether to leave it like that or take it out, in which case if I take it out what I have to do is take the rubber which is under here out as well and uh, hot glue all the buttons in place. So I'll have a think on that and keep going with it. And there we go guys, I think uh, it's safe to say the cut job has been, a, has been what I would call a success. I'm very happy with how it's turned out. 98% clean looking. 
I'm very happy with it. Let me, uh, I'll show you. So, here it is. Mount it, see, straight from the front. Looks pretty good, I think, like there's no gaps around it. There's a gap there. The other ugliest parts of it, definitely these things on the side. This one I did a bit better, it's like much closer. But this one was just a wee bit off, unfortunately. Just really hard to file it and make it perfect. All these buttons, you can still click and push them. So that's something um, different that required a bit more effort. Like normally I just hot glue these to make them static. But now, on this one, they all still click, but they don't do anything. These ones. Obviously, obviously the hazard light button will still work. So, what I ended up doing <clears throat> was, yes, I cut through the circuit board so that I could retain the sections of it to hold down the rubbery bits inside this that allow those buttons to move around. So I didn't realize we zoomed in there. So here's the circuit board, which is now junk, going in the bin. Um, let me show you how I sort of mounted it. So I cut the hole and it just took a whole lot of filing and finagling to sort of get the body of the stereo through the hole in a nice position. And then I started working out how this uh, trim was going to look. Because the thing is, if you take this trim off, you can see kind of gaps around the stereo, but the trim covers them. But since these stick out, that had to sit into there as well. So that was a wee bit tricky. But for mounting it, it wasn't too hard. What I ended up doing was keeping the top half din of the original stereo, you can see just here, be able to focus, that I had to make, I had to cut this. So the bottom half of the stereo is this thing here. So this used to be attached to the bottom of that piece there. So I cut that off so that I could use the factory brackets because uh, it's going to be easier to see on the other side. Where it all attaches. So this piece of metal that you can see here, I had that off, but um, that is what holds the whole stereo on and it only held it on with that tiny little screw there and another one which was here but couldn't be retained because uh, reason being I couldn't keep this din all the way down is because you can see how close that is. This stereo would not fit inside the body of the original stereo so it had to just meet it's held in with a screw up there and then obviously I drilled some holes in the brackets which mount perfectly straight onto the uh, Pioneer mounting holes and then the bracket is secured to the heater which is secured to the face so it's all very strong and structural I'm quite happy with how it's turned out and I've retained the, uh, the grounding clips there as well the factory Subaru ground clips so I'm very happy with how it's turned out structurally I'm 100% happy it's definitely not going to go anywhere it's secured in there good as gold uh, aesthetically, I am 99% happy. The 1% that I'm not happy with is just this gap here. But there's always room for improvement. I'm sure I'll be doing more of these stereos in the future. This was the first, as I say, this is the first time I've had to do one of these ones. And it was definitely harder than the uh, Macintosh ones. The Macintosh ones already have just an extra long DIN stereo in here. And it's quite easy to sort of just make it wide enough for a new stereo to f uh, flow through. But this one was much harder. But I like the fact that I was able to retain all of the push buttons. Like normally I just hot glue them and make them static, but no, that's cool. They won't illuminate with uh, the lights, unfortunately, because that was all part of the circuit board. But no, nah, very, very good. So um, the next step is the easy stuff, wiring up the uh, Pioneer harness to a Subaru hookup lead, and running the microphone, connecting up the steering wheel control wires, and mounting it in. Uh, but before we get too carried away, Shall we just go and have a look how it's going to look in the dash and check that the heater still works as well. I think it's probably a good idea. I did check it earlier, but we better just make sure she's still all going. Plug in the heater. Just like that. That's where it's going to sit. Let's turn the key on. Ignition. Heater, there we go. She's all good. Sweet. So now I can 
do the wiring. Moon. There we go, got the microphone rim, everything is loomed up, we've got our steering wheel, we've got our steering wheel control wires there and our microphone connection all loomed up along here, the steering wheel wires, a connection is tucked in under there where you can't see it, Wahaha. there's that little ground cable I was talking about which clips onto the back of the chassis and the heater wire, all nicely loomed up, time to pop it in. Okay. Let's chuck this in. First things first. Main power harness. Done. Steering wheel controls. Done. Microphone. Done. And aerial. Down here on this little adapter that I've put in. Oh wait, let's put the uh, heater on. There's the heater. This ground connection thing here comes up to the back of the chassis and plugs on there and now just the aerial which goes in there okay put it all in there oh wait we haven't got the hazard light button where is that going it's over here hazard light connection always falls down out of the way making it easy to forget there we go and now let's just Pushes back into place. Just get the things to line up there and there. There we go. Let's turn the key on. Okay, we have ignition and we have Pioneer set up. Yes, it is currently two. It is 219, but I'm going to set this to 223 since that's what they've got this clock set to. Since they think it's 223. Yes, yes, yes. First things first, let's do the steering controls. System, demo off, yes, and now uh, S remote, preset, we'll try Subaru 1, press volume up, yep, volume down, done, okay, radio. <sighs> Wait, that's working, mute. What else have we got there? Mode. Aux, Bluetooth. Radio. And seeking up and down. Let's go. Push once to go through the presets. And hold to seek down. Sweet. Hold to sit down, there we go, volume up. Sweet ass, hazard light button. Yep. Medical research Elimination. Healthy adults into a trial of an investigational drug. If you are 18, for your time and inconvenience. For more information, phone CCST on 0800 TOCC. Shut up, radio. That's pretty close, but I'm going to get real funky with it and make it custom. I'm pretty sure you can do custom colour on this. Oh, there we go, custom. Here we go. Uh, I just want it to be a bit more green. A little bit less blue. There we go, that's pretty perfect. 260.39. 39, go down just a wee bit more, 37 for that one. There we go, now the display is the same tur minty turquoise green colour as that display. Nice, I like it. And the dimmer, let's turn the dimmer on if I can. Yep, that works. 
Sweet ass. I like it. All right, I'm gonna put this back together in three, two, one. There we go. It's back together, all done, completed. I am very happy with how it's turned out. The steering wheel controls are working nice and easily. Hazard light button still works. Heater all works, the dimmer works. The stereo is mounted in, definitely not going in there in anywhere because that is bolted to the internal brackets which are bolted to the car so the stereo can't just be pulled out or anything like that. Yeah, it's good to go. I like the fact that I managed to retain the clickability of all these buttons along under here and these ones up here, they're pushable. These ones are just static, obviously you can't do anything with them, they're just stuck there, they're glued in, in place. And what else? Oh, there was one other thing that I forgot to mention to you guys. I forgot to show you when I forgot to show you guys when I done it, but um, I put some hot glue in behind here so that if anyone tries to put a CD in, it just straight up won't go in. So obviously that's the CD slot. This one doesn't. So yeah. It's all set up, ready to go. Nice. So there you go guys, that's this job done. For, as I say, the first time I've had to do a botch job on this model of stereo. I've previously only done the Macintosh ones and I'm very happy with how this one has turned out. Definitely not as easy as the Macintosh one, but you know, I know it's possible now at least. Sweet as, let me know what you guys think of my work in the comments if you think this is a good solution to the problem with the fact that you can't change the stereos out for cheap on these or do you think that is absolutely horrible and that it just looks like garbage now let me know in the comments but be gentle yeah i'm pretty sure the customer is going to be very happy with this i have if you guys want to see other work i've done on this on these types of legacies i will have shown some photos at the beginning of the video but if you want to check those out Go to my Facebook page, uh, Car Audio Etc. I have a photo album there specifically dedicated to these generation of legacies um, showing with photos, you know, showing other installs I've done on them with stereos and things like that. And yeah, and I'm going to add some photos of this to the mix now, so they should be up there by now. So thank you for watching today's video, guys. Choose to be happy, and I will catch you in the next one. Kakitano.